opening remarks from the scrimmage, and then uh, yeah, it was a, 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 a very successful scrimmage from the standpoint of we hit a bunch of situations that we needed to get covered, and I really liked the ebb and flow of how the situational piece went. You know, I thought in the move the ball period, both one offense and two, uh, one offense and one defense did a really good job. Um, both sides of the ball, I thought, you know, we had some ones versus two situations in the move the ball segments, and I thought we got out of that segment what we needed to. I saw pretty good execution um, by both sides of the ball there. And then we got into some third down stuff. And to me, that's where uh, I thought defensively, we did a really good job on third down and offensively, we've got to obviously get that thing fixed because uh, third down is a huge part of being able to uh, sustain drives and be the type of team we want to be on offense. Um, you know, and then we, we got into our one, one versus one and two versus two segments, and I thought it was a pretty evenly matched uh, scrimmage. So I was pleased walking off the field um, that, you know, we got the work we needed to do with both sides of the balls from that standpoint. And then we were able to get some special teams, and you know, we really hit a bunch of the special teams. I think we got three live kickoffs, three live kickoff returns, some live punt situations that are, are very much needed as we start this evaluation process in terms of what the guys we can count on and what guys we expect to, to, to play a role for us in all three phases. You know, we've only got two big scrimmages before we actually, you know, start our preparation for our first game. So this was the first step for us. Uh, I'm encouraged by it, but you know, again, there's some still some things we gotta get cleaned up as we, um, as we move forward. In coming to the Jack Litch uh, Law Group office, I felt very at ease. Um, I was treated very kindly, and I felt that this is the person that I wanted to work with. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust, and we have, with great results and great service. Call the big dogs, the Jack Litch Law Group. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. How did the quarterbacks look overall, just taken from the practice field there, mentally? You know, we, we, we played each of those guys, um, and we tried to play them pretty evenly in this scrimmage because uh, we wanted to be able to get them evaluated. And, you know, just because we always want to ask that question, like how did they play right when you come off the field, and then you guys get pissed when I say, I got to watch the tape. Um, you know, I, I, just my my uh, view of being on the field. You know, I, we didn't didn't have a bunch of turnovers, uh, so that's a plus. Um, obviously, a, a good quarterback has to win on third down, and I don't think any of those guys did a good job uh, in our third down segment, which is uh, something that we've got to be able to win on third down, and it starts there with the quarterback play and decision making. And I, I didn't think we did very well there, so. Um, I'll hold my judgment until I get a chance to maybe watch the tape a little more closely to just see, you know, because a lot of it goes into decision making. Um, again, the guy that plays quarterback uh, for us, the starter, will be a guy that takes care of the football first and foremost, and then secondly, puts points on the board and, and, and in a productive way. So, you know, I'll, I'll get to watch the tape here and make a decision. When you're talking about quarterbacks in a rotation, is that three, four, five guys? Can you tell us how many are in that rotation? Every quarterback that's on our roster in terms of Max, Piggy, uh, Lance, I mean, all those guys are in the rotation. In terms of identifying playmakers and explosive plays, I mean, how did you see promise in, in that regard? Or were there any players who were freshly already before watching the film? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Anthony McFarlane um, had some big runs early on and, and some limited uh, situations that we played him in. Javon Leak had some really good things. Um, I was happy to see Jake Funk. I mean, he made some big plays. The running back room has been probably the, the most consistent room in terms of where our playmaking ability is. And it's not a surprise because that room is, in my opinion, the strength of our team. Um, what we need to see is on the perimeter, uh, some receivers step up. And, and we've seen guys in the, through the course of this week, you know, Daryl Jones, number 21, has stepped up and, and has done some nice things. You know, Carrier has continued to impress me. Um, you know, DJ is having a really good training camp. So 
I think, you know, again, the running backs have been where the big plays have come, and that's the strength of our team, so I'm pleased with that. Um, yet, we still need to develop a, 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 some big play guys out on the perimeter, and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get to watch the tape and kind of see. And with Jay Sean, you know, Jones going out, you know, with the ACL injury, who have you seen really, you know, step up to try and take, you know, that top wide receiver spot? Yeah, I mean, we've got a group of them, and, and I don't think anybody has stepped up per se to, you know, to, to, to be the, the alpha per se of our receiver group. It'd be nice to find one of those guys that'll be a go-to guy. And right now we've got a committee of guys that are really consistent, but, you know, we've got to find that guy. And that's kind of what, what our reasons for practicing and putting us in these situations to see if we have a guy or a few guys which we would like to see on a perimeter that can make some plays for us like we do out of the backfield. In a skirmish like this, um, is it hard to see what kind of uh, pass rush you're going to get, or can you judge you know, whether guys are getting penetration? No, we, we were able to judge it. I mean, we, I, we felt the effect of the pass rush, especially on third down situations. I mean, you know, that was the one area where I was really concerned on the offensive side during the scrimmage. That's the one situation where we just flat out failed and didn't execute, and defense had a lot to do with it. And the pass rush of, uh, you know, some of those new guys that we have out there, and then the blitz situations, obviously, when they know it's third down, and it's a little tougher on the offense, but we've got to execute and, and, and be able to convert on third down to, to be a successful offense. But you definitely could tell and feel the pressure. You know, I was pleased to see our defense be able to uh, get off the field like that on third down. Yeah. And also to follow up in terms of defensive line uh, with some of the new guys who are getting opportunity, uh, like uh, like Rogers and and, and Kieran Howard. Yeah. What do you have seen? What have you seen from them? You know, I think the big thing with both, really, all those guys, Olu, Lautez, uh, Kieran, you know, all those guys have been really consistent. Um, and have done a good job of what we ask those guys to do. And, you know, we do a lot of movement and we're a pressure defense. And so, you know, those guys are, are asked to penetrate gaps and, and get movement up front. And I've been pleased thus far with those guys on the inside. And, and I think Delbert's done a good job of rotating uh, guys in there and developing the depth that you need to be able to play with on the inside. Like swinging back to the running backs, I know you've had your share of experience with having deep rooms, like a, a Downs, Perry, Allen type of situation. How hard is it to keep all those guys invested in each other and happy when there's only one ball and only so many carries to spread around it? Because it seems like these guys are, are invested that way. Well, they are, and it's they're unselfish. Uh, you know, with, with how that thing has played out, they've all been very unselfish, very team-oriented guys, knowing, and I think that's where the trust comes in, that they know we're going to develop packages and ways to utilize their talent. I mean, we've done it before here and at other places. You know, you, know, you look at what we did at Alabama and Josh Jacobs, who was a, kind of a 1B to Damian Harris, and he gets drafted in the first round because we came up with packages and ways to use – uh, those guys well. I feel like this room is very deep and very similar in that we're three, four, five deep in that room and it's, you know, those guys are very multiple and you know, I can see guys like Funk playing in the slot, you know, I can see Ant McFarlane being able to do stuff in the slot and where we use two and three backs at one time because our best players need to be on the field and as an offensive staff, it's our job to create the personnel groupings to best utilize our talent and so, you know, don't be surprised seeing those guys all over the field and a bunch of them on the field at one time. And I think the unselfishness comes from knowing that we're, we like to distribute the ball. Uh, and if you're a good player for us, we're going to find a way to get you the ball on this, in this offense. Who are some of the defensive and special teams uh, playmakers today? Man, you want to jump out with picks? I mean, 25. I mean, I don't know the picks. I, you know, I, I look at just the pick. I don't know who had them yet. I'll watch it on tape. but. Uh, I think there were a couple interceptions uh, today, uh, but you see 25 flying around. I know Chance Campbell uh, made some plays for us. Uh, you know, I, uh, Isaiah Davis, I think, did some really good things today, just in general. I mean, our corners, both Marcus and Tino, are playing well. So, again, you know, 20 minutes out, uh, haven't watched the film just yet, and I'll probably know a lot more after I get a chance to sit down and. See the tape. What have you seen from Nick Cross in terms of pushing some of the other safeties? Um, I mean, he's he's a guy that obviously has 
taking advantage of some his opportunities with his reps. Uh, you know, he's still learning. There's still a lot of a, a, lear, a huge learning curve for Nick, and we're going to do our part to develop him the right way. I've been pleased with him. Um, you know, as far as pushing other guys, I've been pleased with his development and the pace in which he's uh, he's developing for us. And is Mark, Marcus Miner is he out injured? Uh, right now, yeah, he has a little low back uh, strain, so he's missed the last couple of days. But we expect him back on Monday. What do you expect from all your freshmen this year coming in? Like how much of impact? Yeah. I think the big thing with freshmen when you bring them in is, and at least for us here where we are as a program, their depth, their ability to add depth for us. You know, look in the secondary where we, I think we signed five guys in the secondary. Uh, the tight end position depth is is important. Um, I think the big thing is finding them and being able to utilize them to add depth, which you know takes a load off of some of your starters if they're good enough to help you on special teams. Uh, that's the first place where you see freshmen kind of create a, ni a niche for themselves to where uh, as a coaching staff we have a comfort level because if you can execute and do your job on special teams, it gives us the confidence to put you in such certain situations on offense or defense. So I think the depth that they add, I think the ability to help us on the different teams and then you know if one or two of those guys are, are good enough to push, well, we have no problem with playing young guys. Can you talk about the development of Campbell at linebacker? Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that, you know, he plays the game the way it's supposed to be played, an effort guy, uh, really smart. Um, I've been pleased with his ability to, you know, play in space and play tough and, you know, get the right calls in, which, you know, we're very multiple in defenses. So, you know, Chance is a guy that I've been really pleased with. And he's calling the defensive signals from middle linebacker? Well, different guys are. He's one of them, yeah. Mike, uh, I don't know if you want to comment on this. Josh Gaddis made some remarks <laughs> this week about uh, who was who was actually calling plays and game planning um, at uh, Alabama. Yeah. Do you care to comment on it? Well, I don't care to comment on it, um, but I am because uh, I like to put this to bed. And here, here's what I say: I've been a first-time play caller before. I think back in 2005 was the first time I had a chance to call plays, and so I, I know the anxiety that comes along with it. Um, Josh knows the truth. I think that's really important to understand. Um, and I also know that there's a difference between suggestions and decisions. And he'll have an opportunity to make decisions, decisions now, or decisions now. I can't say that word. <laughs> decisions now, which uh, you know he's got a job to do, and I got a job to do here. I, I want to talk about my coordinator, the guys I have in our program which I feel really good about the guys in, in our program. But he knows the truth, and as I've said before, there's a difference between suggestions and decisions. And I'm sure that notebook he has upstairs has a lot of suggestions in them, and hopefully he'll utilize them in the right way and make good decisions like I did for Alabama. What did you see of the young punters today when you said you You know what? I was pleased with both those guys. I'm glad you asked that question, Keith. Um, both those guys have done a good job of – Hang time placement. Um, very encouraged by, by both the young punters. This is the same topic of play calling, but about you guys. So, okay. um, how are you doing personally with being in the role of being a head coach, but also having a play caller? Um, how's that process going? I know you, yeah. you said you trust Scotty. No, but that's that for you. yeah. So you know, again, Scotty's a Duke guy, so he's, a, he's <laughs> the smartest guy in the room, as you guys all know. Duke guys, no. Um, Scotty's been great, and he's been a guy that's called plays before. Um, obviously, the system is the system that I've brought in. Um, he's able to add to the system. And like I've always said, you know, as a play caller, the best thing you do is put your personality on it. Um, for me, my involvement with the offense, I am going to be involved. I mean, I just left a place where I know that Coach Saban was involved defensively. And, you know, he didn't call plays, but he shaped the game plan during the game, during the week of preparation and I'll be involved with the offense from that standpoint but I got the utmost confidence in uh, in Scotty and the offensive staff uh, to put together good plans. Time for two more. Any idea when Lolo will be back or Ely? Yeah I mean Ely should be back here sometime this week. You know, he had a bad fall landed again when those guys landed on his back uh, so there's nothing major for him so I expect him to be back sometime this week. Uh, with Lolo we're still in the uh, mold of mode of trying to figure out what is wrong. He's had a hamstring that's been nagging him for quite some time and so we've got to get it figured out.
when you talk about uh, having a look at the film, what's your guy's schedule over a weekend, and when do you get any time off, and when do you come back in the office yeah. here? So as a coaching staff, um, you know, when we leave here, we got uh, we had our parents day to day, so we'll have a cookout for our parents up in Cole, and then uh, we'll get right on the films with evaluating it, grading it, you know. The, both sides of the ball have to have the film graded by noon tomorrow. Um, and then uh, we'll get together as a staff and look at all of the quality control stuff and information. And then we meet with the team at four. So we, from now until four o'clock, we'll be getting it evaluated, doing the quality control, grading the film, and, and making decisions. And then the week starts all over again starts Monday? Starts all over again Monday. Sunday is the player's day off. Pool party tomorrow, guys. No doubt. Yeah. Fun, Sunday, fun day. <laughs> I'll be there at noon. Thanks.